You wanna feel old? 16 Candles came out 35 years ago. I just remember being like a seven, eight year old, nine year old kid and being like, oh my God, like what a fun romantic comedy. Like she gets the guy. <laughs> yeah, it was one of Molly Ringwald's like big moments. They f***ing forgot my birthday. So I was about 12 or 13 years old when I first saw 16 Candles. Rewatching it has definitely been a bit of an experience. And I actually watched it for the first time this past weekend and I thought it actually sucked. 16 Candles, like 16 bombs. <laughs> I don't remember the exact age I was when I saw it, but I was definitely like 13 or 14 years old. I loved it at the time. Looking back on it now, there are some things that I don't love about it that does not hold up over the years, but I still actually enjoy watching the film. I saw 16 Candles for the first time when I was a teenager. I definitely liked it at the time, for sure. It has not aged particularly well, and I think a lot of it actually like shocked me. I was not born yet when this movie came out, but of course I had to see it um, back when I was in middle school, so about 10 years ago. I liked it, I loved the movie, I thought it was really great, didn't think anything was wrong with it, thought it was a fun romantic comedy, and then I watched it again, and I was just like, how the heck do they get away with half of the stuff in this movie, it's insane. I watched this movie for the first time two days ago. I had never seen it before. I think I was in shock a little bit because like it was very not politically correct. It was against <laughs> everything the Me Too movement <laughs> has to say. It was just outrageous. And the fact that I think it's rated PG. This movie's rated PG? <laughs> That's impossible. It's filthy and- I mean- and, and kind of offensive. You've got drugs, nudity, you have sex, you have date rape jokes. Way too offensive, I agree. It should be rated R, I think. For- Really? Really? 16 Candles is the story of a teenage girl uh, whose family forgets it's her birthday. And she's sort of a dorky, left of center girl. She has a crush on this guy, Jake Ryan, who's the cutest boy in school, but doesn't think he knows she exists, but he does know that she exists. <laughs> well, I mean, he figures out that she exists. After he finds out she bad. wants to have sex with him. Yeah. There's a party scene, there's the high school drama, there's a wedding going on, her sister's getting getting married. The family is up to their like ears in planning her older sister's wedding. Classic rom-com, dorky girl who nobody cares about and everybody forgets about, ends up getting the guy in the end. He's cute, he's not, uh, not my flavor, but he's still, you know, I guess we're the 80s. All right, let's see the kind of important scene. Yeah. Let's kick it off. Let's do it. Her family forgets her birthday. You can eat your carrots when you get home. That's it? You don't have anything else to say to me today? What would you like me to say, Sam? Come on now, honey, you're gonna miss the bus. Have a good day. Oh. <laughs> that hurts. Just say something. Yeah. <laughs> like, Mom, it's my birthday. <laughs> this would never happen in 2019 because there's Facebook to remind you when everyone's birthday is. Let's just say it, like this wouldn't happen. Like your own parents, unless no. your own parents actually tragically hate <laughs> you. How can you miss your child's birthday? My mom makes it a damn holiday. It's a week long. Must be nice. I've had my birthday forgotten. Oh. And maybe that's just being a middle child. Wait, is she a middle child in this movie? Like I think there's the younger brother, then there's her, then there's, a... just like you. Let's see. Okay, yeah. I guess it does happen. <laughs> and a big Trans Am in the driveway with a ribbon around it and some incredibly gorgeous guy that you meet like in France. You do it on a cloud without getting pregnant or herpes. I don't need the cloud. I'm just a pink Trans Am and the guy, right? A black one. A black guy. A black Trans Am, a pink guy. <laughs> okay. That was up. Whoa. <laughs> a black guy? That friend needs to go. <laughs> As a black man, I'm offended. I'm deeply, deeply offended by that scene. It's just really not okay. That yeah. scene, when I was re-watching it, gave me such anxiety because it, it's racist. You tend it to is. think of the Long Duck Dong stuff as the racist, but like this also. Black Trans Am, pink guy. Is that like a guy with rosacea? I don't understand this joke, but I know it's racist. Come on, what's the problem here? I'm a boy, you're a girl. Is there anything wrong with me trying to put together some kind of relationship between us? Okay, okay, I know you have to go. Just answer me one question. Yes, you're a total <laughs> not the question. Am I turning you on? 
It's and just it's, strange that she's using a gay slur to call him out when he's so clearly horny right. for her. And he's like so desperate. Is it weird that when I rewatched this scene, all I could think about was how amazing Joan Cusack is in this movie? <laughs> yeah. What's happening, hot stuff? His name is Long Duck Dong. I mean, how, how many time. gongs are in this movie? Time. How many gongs? Yeah, well, he's totally bizarre. He is not. He is a very sweet boy. I just hope you bring the sheets and mattresses after he leaves. Ooh. <laughs> Slap the shit out of that little boy for saying that. The music is outrageous. <laughs> or how about the fact that every time they say his name, the gong goes off? Well, imagine being like a young Asian kid watching this. Right. In the 80s. You were probably like afraid to go to school after this. Like a caricature of an Asian person. Yes. It's it's awful. It. I will say one thing about the, the character is that he does get the girl. Early on, he's sort of a player. But like, wow. Really? He has um, the best night of his life. He, he has the best night of his gets life. Gets laid, like, gets drunk. There's no way this character could exist now in any in any film. If honestly. Twitter existed in 1984, oh my God. can you imagine? One, oh the God. gifts. Oh my God. Two, the hot takes. He doesn't drive the plot forward. He doesn't serve a purpose. I guess he was supposed to be comedic relief, but it's it's very distasteful. Long Duck Dong, although controversial, is my favorite character. Of course. Me. It's okay. I meant that it's okay that you did it once, but I didn't mean for you to do it again. They're like in a car at the high school, like the shop class, and he's like trying to hump her leg like a dog. I would totally punch him in the groin if that had happened to me. But and twice. Yeah. Oh, twice. That's yeah, not. Yeah, so he takes the note and then he immediately <laughs> ignores it. My favorite thing is when he goes in again and does the exact same thing. It's like, what? <laughs> you didn't get her reaction the first time? This is like triggering for people in 2019. So triggering. <laughs> True love. <laughs> All it Don't takes I, is being within I three feet say, of each other. They do represent the high school crush very accurately. Two like. passing ships in the night. <laughs> that lip bite, though. I think uh, Sam has a crush. Everybody did when you watched this movie. Again. Go for it. Oh. The panty scene. The infamous panty the scene. In infamous <laughs> panty scene, yeah. Everyone paid a dollar to see Molly Ringwald's underwear. Like, do any of these kids have sisters? You've seen underwear before. I just want to say that this scene ruined me as a young girl. You remember this? I like, they, I like so specifically remember this because you're like, men want my underwear? My used underwear? And I was like, that's weird. The nerds loved it. Be polite to his parents, all right? Hey! Come on in and party harder to the person. <laughs> Every good high school movie has to have a rager. These are the nerds. Are they gonna get in? I want his buddies. Be cool. Were your high school parties like this? I held parties at my house. N not once did anybody in my town have a party like this. And every 80s movie had a house party where people were just being sexually assaulted left and right. Like watching these movies back in, like, you know, from the 80s, you're like, I want to go to a house party like that. And then you're like, never mind. <laughs> this looks scary. Joan Cusack to me is the star of this movie. I really think that it's so subtle, and I totally forgot that she was even in this movie until I rewatched it. But just like her, the headgear is so good. It was like a universal sign of a loser. The struggles, no one's there to help her with like the fountain, like. Oh no, she just oh. struggles her whole way. But you know what? She always overcomes. They never explain what's wrong with her. <laughs> is it just orthodontics? Did she get in like a car accident? It's literally 10 scenes of her trying to drink. <laughs> there, there, there is no closure yeah. on that plot line at all. No. She's just there. I mean, it's such a good background <laughs> gag. And I think like all those good 80 comedies, like that's such a trait of them. 
So probably the worst part of this movie is oh my god this hilarious oh. scene where a the prom queen is blackout drunk, and Jake Ryan it looks like basically offers her unconscious body to the nerd to drive her home. This was so up. But even before this, he was like, oh yeah, Caroline's upstairs and I can violate her 10 different ways if I wanted to. I know, we did say she that. passed out upstairs, I can vi violate her. And actually, he didn't love her at all. If he actually loved her, he would have rescued her, really taken oh, care yeah. of her. Also, the friend code, where are her friends? See, nowadays, you just call them an Uber. In today's time, like, this would not fly at oh, all. Oh, God, no. This would be, like, complete outrage. He, like, literally passes her off and is like, oh, take your turn. You know that there weren't enough, like, women in charge in, in Hollywood in the 80s that no one said, huh, this might send the wrong message. This it's is not bad. This funny. is two guys. This is not funny. This is two guys staring at a woman who literally doesn't even know her own name right now and getting in a car with a guy that doesn't have a license. Who's horny as hell. You can't under underemphasize how horny his He's character is. He's so horny. <laughs> yeah, he takes her to a friend's house so that they can take pictures of him next to her unconscious body. I remember this as a child thinking like, this is what men do? In 2019, this would be all over Instagram uh, and her life would be ruined. Yeah, she wouldn't be able to delete these pictures. No. Thank God the photograph doesn't work out. <laughs> Nothing made me happier than when the photo didn't turn out properly. <laughs> Did we, uh... Yeah. I'm pretty sure. Um, excuse me, but um, do you know if um, did I did I enjoy it? I mean, that's of course I enjoyed it. I mean, um, what I meant what I meant was um, did you? You know, I have this weird feeling I did. She clearly cannot consent. She can't remember. She yeah. can't say whether they did. He also can't. But also, Jake put them in the car together. So they both don't remember. It's this bad. is like double date rape. I mean, there was for sure no consent. She doesn't remember it, but thinks she enjoys it. It's cringeworthy, definitely. Like, if that happened today, like, that's the opening of almost every Law & Order SVU episode ever. Can we hold hands during this? Oh my god. <laughs> He's still so dreamy. In a red sports car. I love it. I love she, her little... The flower crown. The flower crown. She's like Coachella ready. He finds this note, finds out this girl wants to have sex with him, and then he decides to just, like, completely upend his entire life. I love that. Me? Me? It's like there's no one else at the church. Like they've never had a conversation once in this entire movie and all of a sudden they're running away together. He's like, I pawned my ex off to a dweeb last night. Come away with me. She's like, F the wedding. I'm going with you, Jake. I mean, it's definitely an iconic ending. That shot, like it's... It's an iconic ending. Yeah, there's it's, no way. It's one of the most famous shots, I feel like, of the 80s. Where did he have time to like bake a cake? Everything the movie does wrong it still has, I think, one of the most iconic rom-com endings of all time. Yes, I think that the ending of this movie, even though it has its issues, has literally set up a formula for every rom-com going forward. They would rewrite this whole thing. Oh, and, yes. But when I was 12, 13 years old, I was just like, yay, she got the boy. <sighs> I still love it, mm -hmm. and it's like a, it's like part of our culture, and I think it's important actually to maybe watch it as like a learning experience. It is part of our culture, like the <laughs> Civil know? War. We can't forget. Yeah, never forget. <laughs> I mean, it would be two thumbs up if it was like maybe a few years ago and I like, I didn't watch this movie with like a critic's eye. Right. But so now I'm gonna do that because it's still a great movie, yeah, but I'm like, do this. yeah. Throw, Throw out. out. Throw thumbs out. Down. Two thumbs down. Not into this one. One of those, glad I saw it for reference, would never watch again. We got it. <laughs> I mean, it's not a bad film by any means, it's just, it's the rough draft. Them. I know. Oh wow. I, I don't think, I think the good parts uh, are really just like 15 minutes worth. Do we have to throw it out? Can we recycle it? <laughs> we recycled the formula, you sure. know, we just, and we just created better scenes and better writing. All right, I'm gonna say it. 16 candles, throw out. Oh!